thank you uh, thank you rutul dharmendra chairpersons and the psg team for inviting me to talk about postpartum management of diabetes i think we all know that we all know how to treat diabetes in postpartum lady so i will rush through my slides so we all know that uh, the obesity increasing prevalence of obesity and positive family history they contribute to hyperglycemia as well as hypertensive disorders in pregnancy and this contributes to adverse pregnancy outcomes as well as long term impact on the health of mother as well as their child so we have to act during pregnancy before pregnancy and even after pregnancy so that we can improve the health of mother as well as her family this will be the agenda of my today's talk why it is important to maintain glucose control even postpartum particularly during labor it is very much important because it decreases the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia postpartum maternal hypoglycemia is quite common particularly in women who are on insulin therapy because of decreasing insulin requirements however hyperglycemia may occur and this may complicate the recovery particularly in women who have underwent cesarean deliveries and therefore euglycemia should be maintained during labor delivery and also in the early postpartum period that is very much required in women who are having hyperglycemia in pregnancy what are the glucose targets we all know during pregnancy already we have discussed what are the targets during pregnancy what target should be maintained during labor and delivery to decrease the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia it is between 70 and 110 up to 126 is okay but if goes below 180 then definitely it increases the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia so generally most of the institutions where insulin is required they use insulin glucose infusion because most of these women they are nil orally we don't know whether they will require cesarean or not and therefore that is the protocol and these are the targets which are to be maintained during labor what is about postpartum once the baby is delivered the targets are relaxed and now you can follow the non pregnant targets that is the routine targets which are there for non pregnant adults you can follow those targets now once the baby is delivered but we still don't know in women who have underwent cesarean section what should be the ideal target to maintain to speed the recovery but as per the data any surgical procedure you have to keep your sugars below 180 to speed the wound healing and that is what applies in women who have under cesarean deliveries also this is the north western protocol they have designed a very good protocol for management of hyperglycemia during labor and immediate postpartum period that is up to 2 hours up to 8 hours and up to 12 hours and here they have kept the target of not less than 70 and not more than 200 in the immediate postpartum period 2 hours after delivery whether it is vaginal delivery or it is a cesarean delivery now we all know that insulin is the gold standard for management of hyperglycemia in pregnancy and that applies also to the postpartum period particularly lactating women insulin is the standard of care what happens to insulin requirements immediately insulin requirements falls down once the baby is delivered because of expulsion uh, expulsion of placenta the placental hormones go down insulin resistance goes down and insulin requirements go of hypoglycemia and so mostly after delivery you have to reduce the insulin particularly in type 1 women and in pre existing diabetic women who were on insulin or gdm women requiring insulin generally you have to stop insulin what happens in type 1 diabetes generally they return to insulin requirements they return to pre pregnancy levels or even lower following delivery 50 to 80 percent dose reduction generally is recommended, but it is to be individualized. Or if you have to start from a new, then one third to one half of the term pregnancy dose or weight based dosing, then you can use that in type one diabetes. Type two diabetes, it requires lot of individualization. Many of the women they will not require insulin or very low dose of insulin postpartum and GDM. generally insulin is to be stopped they don't require any kind of therapy they require regular monitoring of blood sugar and proper follow up so that we can identify women who are at risk of development of diabetes what about type 1 diabetes 
once the baby is delivered generally postpartum there is a deterioration in glycemic control not immediate period but later on and women they fail to reach to their pre-pregnancy weight there is some amount of weight gain and that contributes to deterioration in glycemic control and that should be focused upon and that is the very important area that in type 1 you should try to maintain the pre-pregnancy weight reach that within one year after delivery also parity affects insulin requirement so a type 1 delivering a baby then again becoming pregnant the insulin requirement will go up rather than in first pregnancy the second pregnancy more amount of insulin will be required because of increase in insulin resistance with subsequent frequency uh, subsequent pregnancy and that should be kept in mind and the women should be counseled about the same thing what about non insulin therapies can we use oral drugs uh, during in postpartum women having hyperglycemia during pregnancy this is for type 2 diabetes uh, not type 1 diabetes so i think you have to be very careful because these drugs may get excreted in breast milk and may have impact on babies also generally none of the oral drugs they are recommended by any guidelines to be used in a lactating women however metformin there are small studies that it is excreted in very small amounts in breast milk so you can use but then you have to use it in caution particularly preterm infants you have to avoid these molecules sulfonyl ureas they are generally not used and women should be counseled about the potential problems with the use of oral hypoglycemic agent should during lactation and therefore insulin is the standard of care this is the study based on which gliburide and glipizide they have been suggested by some of the guidelines that if required you may use that during breastfeeding in a woman small studies in eight and five women and small dose was given and the excretion in breast milk was negligible what about gliptins the labeling says you cannot use it citagliptin vildagliptin any kind of gliptin you cannot use in a lactating woman or woman who is breastfeeding this is a study of vildagliptin where they have tried to use it in women requiring insulin re insulin requiring gdm who develop and then subsequently they have given them vildagliptin for prevention of diabetes small number of women in this study very high dropout rate however vildagliptin was safe and it was having beneficial impact on beta cell function and hba1c but this was not used in women who were breastfeeding so during breastfeeding you have to avoid gliptins a carbose although it is not being absorbed from the mother's gi tract but we don't know what happens whether it reaches the infant or not and therefore it is not recommended or to be used during breastfeeding glp1 analogs and sglt2 inhibitors same applies they are to be avoided during pregnancy and lactation so non insulin therapies they are a big no if required metformin can be used in a small dose otherwise insulin is the standard of care for management of hyperglycemia in women who are breastfeeding so that was about postpartum glucose management and now we need to think beyond glucose because these are the women who are at risk of cardiovascular disease also as highlighted by dr bharat sabu and professor benaji also so this is the gdm obesity and type 2 diabetes if you see the obesity with gestational diabetes the risk of development of type 2 diabetes is almost seven times higher only if you reduce body weight of this gestational diabetic women you make them no neighbors the hazard ratio drops from 7.59 to 2.37 so focus on weight lifestyle modification is the key to success help women to reach their ideal body weight and that will prevent type 2 diabetes in almost 60 to 70 percent of these women who are at very high risk of development of type 2 diabetes cvd is also very common this already discussed by dr bharat sabu 23 percent contributed by type 2 diabetes there is direct association between gdm and subsequent risk of cvd in women who were developing gdm and if you can prevent type 2 diabetes this is another data varieties of cvd total cvd mi coronary revascularization heart failure cerebrovascular disease diabetes if you can prevent then you can reduce the risk from year to year so gdm women if you prevent obesity if you prevent
type 2 diabetes development, you can reduce the risk of cardiovascular events in these women. What about other aspects which are very important in a postpartum lady? Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is must. Lactation is to be allowed for every woman who has got hyperglycemia in pregnancy, whether it is type 1, type 2 or GDM. I have already discussed that oral drugs are a big no, you can use metformin, very limited evidence for glibenclamide glipizide. If you want to use antihypertensive drugs, then you have to use the drugs which are being used for hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, nifedipine, methyl dopa and labetolol. You can use selected beta blockers like propanolol or metoprolol and S inhibitors like uh, enalapril and perindopril. There is some evidence to support their use in postpartum lady. And breastfeeding, it provides long term benefits, not only to mother, but also to offspring in reducing the risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. And there is data to support that. This is the women who were doing breastfeeding for more than nine months, who were having GDM and the risk of development of metabolic syndrome almost reduced by 90%. So breastfeeding provides some protection against metabolic abnormalities being developed in the women who has GDM. These are two data, the one is from the Japan where high intensity breastfeeding was used and there was a direct reduction in insulin resistance. They have measured HOMA IR before and after and there was an improvement in insulin resistance irrespective of obesity and postpartum weight change. So breastfeeding has got some connection with insulin sensitivity, it improves insulin sensitivity, it decreases fasting glucose and it provides long term protection against obesity and type 2 diabetes both in mother as well as in the offspring. Comprehensive plan apart from breastfeeding you have to focus on contraception which is must for this women because unplanned pregnancy is a big no-no to a woman who has developed GDM or hyperglycemia in pregnancy. Preconception care should be emphasized at every visit by a physician, diabetologist as well as gynecologist. This women should be encouraged for adoption of healthy lifestyle, healthy behaviors, achievement of ideal body weight and ideal sugar values and psychosocial assessment and support is very important because these women they are also at high risk of psychiatric disorders because of the postpartum status, hormonal changes as well as various biological, physical and emotional changes which are occurring in this period. Postpartum blues, postpartum psychosis, postpartum depression, everything is quite common in these women and therefore they require regular mental health, health assessment and mental health support. This is also being highlighted by ADA guidelines. To summarize, I will say postpartum you have to focus not only on the glucose values, but you have to focus on health at all, the body weight, blood sugar, blood pressure, everything. And this I have found very useful. This is an educational tool for women who have delivered a baby who was having hyperglycemia in pregnancy. This is being used at some of the hospitals in UK and this is very good. They are telling that know your numbers, blood pressure, fasting, post meal A1C, weight, waist circumference, BMI and what are your targets. Within one year, what is your goal? What should be your blood pressure, your sugar, your weight and your BMI? Because if you educate women and if women is doing good healthy lifestyle choices then the entire family will be saved from that non-communicable diseases uh, uh, being occurring in that family. So with that I thank you and I again thank PSG team for inviting me.